Released in 2022 as part of a Windows 11 update, Clipchamp is a free video editing application. But is it any good? Today, I'll review it from the perspective of a full-time content creator. While I currently use professional software like Premiere Pro, I haven't forgotten how it is to start out with only free or low-cost options. So let's jump in and see what Clipchamp can do. First, you have to sign into Clipchamp using a Microsoft or other account. I'm sure there are other reasons, but your account is used in case you want to purchase the paid upgrades and store projects in the cloud. In this video, I'm only going to focus on the free version of Clipchamp. What you'll see first is the home page. You can start from scratch or start from a template. There are templates for graphical assets like intro screens, as well as templates for social media formats, holidays, and more. You can also create recordings using your webcam, screen, or microphone, but this video is only going to focus on editing videos. There is also a brand kit feature that helps you create consistent assets for your videos. Rather than a template, I will start from scratch so I can get a feel for the workflow. On the right, taking up most of the screen, is a preview of your video. Below that is the timeline where you will place assets like video clips, audio, and more. In the middle of that are playback buttons, timeline tools, and the timecode. It's not until we add some footage to the timeline that we will see anything other than black. We will come back to that. To the left is a sidebar with various assets. Your media is where you can import video, images, and audio clips. You can also choose from template and stock assets and generate text and graphics. There are even transitions that can be applied in between clips. On the far right is another sidebar with properties that can be modified for clips such as audio, color, speed, and more. Some of these can be used for correction, while others are special effects. At the top right are buttons to upgrade and export your video as a file you can watch, share, sell, or upload to social media. Below that, you can change the aspect ratio of the project. 16 by 9 is the standard, but you can also choose 1 to 1 or 9 to 16 for vertical video. And in the top left, you can rename your project and access the cloud backup feature if you paid to unlock it. To fully demonstrate the capabilities of Clipchamp, I will use the assets from a pre-existing project that I edited with Premiere Pro. Because I am attempting to demonstrate in a short period of time, the video I chose is fairly simple. I will drag all of my assets into the media panel. While I like the simplicity of the media panel, it's missing a folder feature to sort the content. An average project would easily exceed the size of this panel, forcing me to scroll up and down to locate footage. Next, I will drag the narration clips onto my timeline and arrange them in the correct sequence. I'll use the plus and minus buttons at the top right of the timeline to expand or contract the view of the timeline. You can also zoom to fit. One thing that stands out is that you don't see the audio waveform for the video track. This is an essential feature, in my opinion, because it gives you helpful feedback. You can right-click on the video track to separate the audio onto the audio track. Now you can slightly see the waveform, but not very well. But what's worse is that the audio and video become out of sync. For this reason, I do not recommend separating the audio. That on its own is going to make this a much less efficient editing process than it needs to be. I'll zoom in and use the play button to preview the video. I'll place the playhead where I want to make a cut, then select the clip or hold shift to select multiple clips, and use the split tool, which looks like scissors, to cut the video clip. The shortcut for that is S. The goal here is to remove any prolonged silence and mistakes. Normally, I'd be using the audio waveform to help me see where the silence is, but I can't do that. Another thing that adds inefficiency is the fact that the playback is limited to real time. You should be able to play back at double speed and faster. Use the trash icon or press delete to remove unwanted content from the timeline. You'll also want to delete the blank space to shift the clips toward the beginning of the track. I find it hard to distinguish between the separate cuts. You have to hover over them to see them more easily. I won't fully edit this video because this is just a demonstration, so I will just make a few more cuts so I at least have a minute or so of narration, and then we can move on to adding some B-roll next. Stacking clips allows you to layer up the composition. The topmost layers will cover those on bottom. I will add what's known in the industry as B-roll. This is just footage that I will cut to occasionally so that the entire video isn't just my face. I'll drag a clip onto the timeline separate from the rest of the video. Normally I'd be able to just extract the parts of the video I want before I place it on the timeline, but Clipchamp doesn't let me do that. 
so I will just have to trim out what I want. Next, I'll move the clips into place above the narration track. I can drag the ends of the clips to trim them as well. You may see a buffering screen appear constantly while you're playing back the video to preview it. The more complicated your scene, the more often you will see this. I've barely started and it's already popping up too frequently for my taste. Most likely this is because I am recording what I'm doing while I'm editing the video. I'll add a few more B-roll clips to finish up the project. I'll speed up the clips as needed to make them fit the narration. Next I'll add a jump cut effect by making the video of my narration larger when it cuts to the next clip. To do this, I'll simply drag the edges of the clip to expand it and make it larger. Let's also try adding some transitions between clips. Simply click between clips to apply them. There are many transitions to choose from, and you can customize the duration as well. Whichever transition is currently selected will continue to be applied until it is changed. Unfortunately, the buffering is so frequent that it makes it very difficult to preview the transitions. For reference, this video footage is in 1440p, which is a little bit larger than HD, but still it doesn't feel like my GPU is being used at all here. Let's fade out the end of the video. There is a separate effect menu for that. Adding text is fairly easy. Select it from the left menu to choose a style and animation. Then edit the text from the text menu on the right. As far as color correction goes, it's very bare bones in ClipChamp. Although, between Adjust Colors and Filters, you can achieve many of the commonly used video effects. The main issue is that you cannot copy and paste effects to multiple tracks, nor can you group the tracks and apply the effect to the group. Even worse, there are no values to reference for the effect sliders. You'd have to eyeball it. This makes color correction unusable in my opinion. The only way to get consistency would be to use the filters, but many of those are behind a paywall. In terms of audio editing, you can only turn the volume up or down. There isn't any noise removal, compression, or other features you'd find in many of the popular paid video editing applications. In another example of making a useful feature useless, there isn't any audio meter to show you how loud the audio is. You'd have to adjust it by ear, which is not very professional. I'll add in one of the free audio tracks for some background music, and lower the level of that until it fits in. Then I'll trim off the end and fade it out. I don't see a way to save manually, so I guess this must be auto-saving. It would be preferable to have the option to save and save as. I can render several popular sizes in MP4 format, though I am limited to 1080 HD. The render starts immediately. I have a fairly powerful computer and GPU, so normally a render like this would happen much, much faster if I were using a more professional application. One interesting feature is that you can pop out the export preview. Though ClipChamp reminds you not to close it, or use too many applications, or it will affect the render speed. After rendering, I can see that the video quality is noticeably lower than the original footage. There isn't a way to change the export settings, so you're sort of stuck with that. This video will get even more compressed after you upload it to social media. There really should be a high quality rendering setting. Now that I have created a trial video, I have a pretty solid opinion of this application. It's a fine video editing application for the absolute beginner. You can make basic videos with this, as long as you aren't trying to get too fancy. I would say formats like shorts, vlogs, education, gaming, and other types of videos that don't require a lot of complex editing would work well with this application. If you were trying to make documentaries, animations, or films, I believe ClipChamp would be frustratingly slow to use and probably not very reliable. The rendering output alone is too low quality, even for YouTube. If you're a professional, you can do better than this. I wouldn't even waste your time on ClipChamp. Premiere Pro has much more to learn, but essentially it works the same as ClipChamp, but with far fewer limitations and faster performance. Speaking from experience, one of the biggest mistakes you can make as a content creator is becoming reliant on poor quality tools. You need to take a leap and try to reach the next level. And when you finally do, you will see that what you thought was easy software is actually more difficult to use because it is less efficient. Or in other words, you'll spend less time making videos if you learn how to do it with the right tools. So I would say start with ClipChamp and work your way up to something more sophisticated once you can afford to or it becomes necessary. 
It's important that there is a decent free option for editing videos, and being built into Windows eliminates risks from unfamiliar third-party apps that you might not feel comfortable installing. So while it's not the best, ClipChamp is okay in my book. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this review of ClipChamp. If you did, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out some of my other videos for content creators. Thanks for watching and stay creative.